Hi, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and I'm getting settled in the new sewing room. It's it's a little bare right now, but bear with me, okay? <laughs> no pun intended. All right. So here's the deal. We're here for our Kimber Bell Society for November 2024, and we're making a super cute freestanding lace stocking that's lined inside and out. We're adding a little hanging tab so we can put ours on the tree, but this is pretty simple. So let's head over to our interactive presentation deck that you get in the description of this video and dig in and see how we make this cute little thing. All right, so like I mentioned, we have an interactive presentation deck that you will find in the description of this YouTube video. You'll also find it on our Bernina of Naperville website under Kimber Bell Society. And once you find that product, you'll see that we have a lot of these monthly digital dealer exclusives, or what we call Kimber Bell Society. And um, we try to put our most recent one right at the top of the list. So let's Let's have a look at this. So we also include a link to the video that you're watching here, just in case you know you stumbled upon it, but you forgot where you found it. We put it here in the presentation. And then we also have kits available. Now, there's kits available with and without the design. And that's because some of you might already have like a yearly subscription somewhere, but you're just looking for the fabric and some other goodies. Then, um, and this month's kit is. I mean, it's super easy. There's only just a little bit of fabric and a little bit of glitz. So, so this month, we're going to be making the large stocking. Now, most of what we're doing this month is all with thread. So there's just a little bit of this red, red gingham here that we're using for the lining. And then there is this little glitter sparkle stuff. And don't forget, we want to make sure to peel that protective coating off and then just hit this with the iron to secure any little glitter that might be left behind. So we need these two pieces. Additional things that you're gonna be adding is two colors of red, one in a richer tone and one in a lighter tone. We have used the 1911 and 1903. Now also with this video, in the description of the video, there is a, an interactive handout that's gonna give you links to purchase these threads if you don't have them in your collection. And then we also get a dark pink, which is 22. And we also recommend a dark pink, which is 2320 and a light pink, which is 2560. Finally, we need a cream and I had to open a new one this time. And this is a little bit whiter than cream. It's called Ghost White and it's color 0003. And then finally, we need a green and that one is 5722. And these are all Isocord 40 weight polyester thread. And just a little reminder, when you're opening a new spool of Isocord, you can just pull it off like that. <laughs> so, can hear that. That's the Laura Star. It's ready to press, which means that I can take my piece here and add some fusible backing to it. So fusible backing is like a lightweight fabric, like you see here, with fusible on it, and it just gives the fabric a little bit more robustness. So what I'm gonna be doing is cutting my pieces according to the Kimberbell instructions, and then backing each of these pieces with a piece of our fusible woven. And also, you can see here, this month I'm using the midi hoop, and I am going to just veer a little bit off of the norm here from what Kimberbell is recommending. Kimberbell wants you to use the sticky back wash away stabilizer, and that's perfectly fine. I just kind of feel like it's overkill because you're not really sticking anything into the hoop. What they want you to do is put the sticky stuff in, expose the stickiness, then put another layer of the same stuff without the sticky backing on it. So I've decided that a nice combination is to use aqua mesh, which is what I'm using here, and badge master. And together, this is the dynamic duo that's going to give you starch and it's going to give you the stabilization of something that's not going to pull apart easily when all of those needle penetration marks go through our stabilizer. 
So basically we need one layer of Aquamesh and one layer of Badge Master. And these are products by OESD. I know this might sound sacrilegious, whatever. I just find that these work a little bit better for me in my freestanding lace. So I'm gonna lay a layer of that down and lay a layer of our Badge Master down. And it doesn't matter which side of the stabilizer you put on top. I think I'm gonna be happier putting the Badge Master on the bottom just because the camera, I don't want the glare to show up as we film this. And then this MIDI hoop that I'm using here is wonderful because it's one of those Bernina ratchet hoops where I can just kind of tighten it up here. But once it stops clicking, you wanna just maybe do one more click, but just always remember not to over tighten. And then I'm just gonna give this just a little gentle tug here. There we go. All right, so let's take a moment to see how to get your embroidery design that comes with our very small kit this month from Kimberbell. So once you purchase your kit from us, you are obviously, you're gonna receive a kit in the mail from Bernina Paperville, but there's a digital downloadable file that comes from Kimberbell. And so what I wanna remind you is that this email doesn't say, hey, congratulations, you ordered something from Bernina of Naperville. Here is your design for April. It doesn't say that. It comes from Kimberbell and it'll say something like, uh, reminder, you have received a digital dealer exclusive product, or it's going to say something like that. So go ahead and click on that. And then you're going to scroll down. And in my case, it says taco cord organizer. Don't get excited. This is just something that I need because we're going to make this one day, right? But you're going to scroll down and you're going to just download now. So I'm going to click that button that says download now. And I download a lot of stuff. You can see all my stuff down here. But I have to create a Kimberbell login and password. But I want you to please note that this gail at bernineofmaperville.com, I can't use this because this is my business email for them. I'm actually creating an account like you're going to create an account with the email address that you want to receive your files. Whatever email address you've provided Bernina of Naperville, we are going to provide Kimberbell to get your designs. You also have to have a, a login generated with Kimberbell. So if you need to create an account, if you've never ordered anything from Kimberbell before and that kind of thing, you're gonna create a new account by clicking here and you're gonna give your email address, you're gonna do a password, confirm the password, and you're going to consent to receive updates and emails if you want, and also text messages if you choose to go that route. Now, if you already have an account with them, like I have a personal account with Kimber Bell, you're gonna make sure you enter that information in, type in your password, and then log in. And then once you log in, you can see the latest downloads or the oldest and all of that, well, we can see the brand new one here is this particular design and I'm just going to download it and while it downloads it's going to download into my downloads folder it's coming in there and it comes in zipped and so once it's downloaded I can go to my downloads folder and you can see there's our download folder and I'm just going to take this and I'm right clicking to make a copy, and then I'm gonna put it in my embroidery designs folder. And I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna make a folder here called Kimberbell. And you can put your file wherever you would like to keep it on your computer. And now I'm gonna paste this, and now there's my design. Now you'll notice that this folder has a little zipper on it, I can't just use these files. I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna extract. And I'm gonna extract it right to this folder. And then what happens is I get another folder that doesn't have a zipper on it. So I'm gonna select, once I extract it and get that regular folder out of there, 
I'm going to click this zippered folder and delete it. And now I can access this file and get my designs out of there. So no matter what version of the software that you might be using, for the Bernina Embroidery software, Creator, Designer, or Artlink, you're going to open a design. And you're going to want to open your design from the folder where you saved your Kimberville design. So you double click it. And don't be alarmed over the non-native design that pops up. It's going to pop up. Just go ahead and click OK. Then you're going to send it to your machine by putting in a USB stick into your computer and using this little sewing machine button right here to send the design to the USB stick. Now, if you do not have the software and you've saved your file in a folder that you can remember, then you just need to drag and drop the designs onto a USB stick. So as you can see, the Kimberbell designs that I have access to, there are art files, DST, EXP, and the like. So the Berninas do not read art unless you have a Bernina 200 or 730 Artista out there. So we're gonna use the EXP. And then I can just click, hold down my shift key and click, and then drag this on to a USB stick. So I can simply put a USB stick into my computer and then it shows up here as my D drive. So I just left click and drag and drop it right onto that USB stick. And now I can put the USB stick in my machine. From the video that I showed you earlier where we, you know, it was just our generic data transfer, you can actually open your software. And if you have a Bernina 790 Pro or a 990, you can actually send your designs wirelessly. So if I look at my available machines, you can see right there, I've got my 790 Pro ready to go. So I can click that and then simply either choose to stitch it out immediately or save it for later. And it works exactly the same with the 990. So this month, there are two different size designs. There's a smaller one that fits in the large hoop, and there's a larger one that fits in the midi hoop. But as you can see from the designs on the left, the colors that it's stitching out in are a little bit weird, right? So let's go ahead and see how to change these. Now I'm gonna show you how to change these using our Bernina 990. Okay, so here I am at my Bernina 990. Now here at home, I am just going to use a USB stick to transfer this design. So I'm going to, to find my USB stick on my machine. And there's my Kimberbell folder. And there's my design. So now these colors are a little not what we're looking for, right? So we're just going to go by our color assignments to switch them. And so you're going to select your edit button, which is this little pencil. I go to the colors. And then it spells out all of our colors here. So the first one I want to do is color number one. That is going to be the ghost 0003. And so I'm going to search for my isochord thread chart. And then there's ghost white. Now, as we go on to color number two, it can be a little annoying if you have to pick your isochord thread chart every time. So I backed up and I am going to the bottom of this color screen where you can see I can pick my thread chart for the whole design. And so I'm just going to find the isochord and then select it. And, and now, at least now, when I go to pick and change from color number two back to my ghost 
white, picket, white, next one, that's white, next one, which is a different color, to be five, five, Seven, two, 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 five is definitely going to be red, but in this case, our red that we're looking for is nineteen oh three. And then three again. Color number seven is 1903. Color number eight is going to be our darker pink, which is 2320. Color number nine is light pink, which is 2560. And then the middle dot, I want it to be color number 1911. Eleven is going to be 1911. And then color number 12 and color number 13 is going to be ghost white again. And you can see the changes that are made to the stocking. And at this point, I would recommend that you save this on your machine or the USB stick again. We're going to name it. And we're going to just put it on our USB stick the Kimberbell folder, and green So now, let's get things prepped. Now that we know how to assign our thread colors and all of that, well, we need to wind a bobbin of each of our thread colors. Now, it's safe to wind a full bobbin of our white, but for the rest of these, you can go ahead and just like wind half. So I did use a little strip of this to make a very skinny little loopy thing, right? And I'm just gonna stitch with my sewing machine a quarter, and I'm just gonna stitch with my sewing machine, you know, like a little bit on this side and that side to hold it down. But this is gonna be a hanging tag for our little stocking. So now we're in embroidery mode, we're stitching our stocking, and the first three colors is easy. It's the ghost white 0003 in the bobbin and in the top, and the first color is just this grid at the bottom of the stocking, and it's just really repetitive, and that's why we wanted to wind a totally full bobbin of our white. And then you just simply have to press the button to go again for the snowflakes because those are done in white as well. I suppose you could change the color of these if you wanted. Then once we hop on to our green, we're going to change the bobbin and the top thread to stitch those leaves. Our next color is 1903, which is this lovely cheery cherry red. And this is a placement stitch for where we're going to put our glitter vinyl. And I used the 505 glue stick just to hold down my piece. And don't forget to put it glitter side up. <laughs> and then just like make sure that that glue holds it down and then we can stitch the next color. And this is the tack down stitch. And we're gonna use those really sharp curved serrated scissors, the Karen K Buckley scissors for our trim and place. So once that glitter is stitched down. We're going to go about, I'd say, a sixteenth of an inch from the edge there. I clean it up a little bit, get the bulk off of there, 
And now it's time to finish with the next color, which spells out joy. And then we have our hot pink, which is going to be the petals on our flowers. And then we have our lighter pink, which is going to be the alternate petals. And then once the light pink is done, we're going to find our darker red, which is that 1911, to stitch the berries. Now, I have thread away on with my machine at this point, and you know, that makes it look really super neat on top. But we want to have those really sharp scissors handy because before we stitch our next color, we want to trim this little hairy mess behind our piece. So we get all those little clippings away, blah, blah, blah. Then we can thread up the ghost white again in the bottom and in the top because it's going to be time to do our assembly of the stocking right in the hoop. So we put the hoop back on and we're going to take uh, one of our interfaced gingham pieces face pretty side down and we're going to stitch color number 12 and we're going to match the thread to our stocking. And now this is stitching our actual backing onto the stocking and this is going to stitch um, everything but the very top because we need to have an opening on our stocking so we can put things in it. So we want to make sure that this piece is placed right side down on the top of the hoop. Once color number 12 is complete, you're going to remove the hoop from the machine but not the work from the hoop and you're going to turn the hoop upside down and ooh there's my nice little clean job of cutting that I did and now we're going to put another piece of the gingham right side down on the back side of the hoop and gravity wins every time ladies and gentlemen so we want to tape our piece down so it does not fall off as we're stitching. And then once that's secure, we turn the hoop over and stitch the final color, which is going to be stitching the lining of the stocking down. And that means that it is going to leave a little opening on the left side there. And that's where we're going to be turning the stocking inside out. or right side out rather. I always get those confused. Okay, so here it comes out of the hoop. You can see that the last stitching goes all the way around the stocking. And one of the reasons is we are only like lining the inside of the stocking or the, the inside back and the outside back because the front part of the lace stocking stays. So I'm just gonna trim this about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Like so. And then remember to clip your little curves like this. and your curves here and here. And then we are going to turn it inside out from this piece and then turn it inside out again. I might need to do this off camera because you know, this is like wrestling a wet seal. Okay, now once you turn it inside out on the side, it's gonna seem like it's not gonna wanna open here, but that's because you have sewn onto stabilizer there. So you're gonna carefully cut that. And you might wanna use your smaller scissors here
There we go. Perfect. And now we're going to turn it inside out again. Now, here's something to keep in mind. You could whip stitch this by hand at this point. I'm going to just do a little bit of glue, okay? And so now I'm going to turn this inside out this way now. And if you wanted, you could also trim any little loose threads that you see. See, there's the pretty side there. Okay, so I opened the seam back here to insert my little hanging tab here. So I'm just gonna fold this over like this and put it right in here. And then I'm just gonna stitch that with my sewing machine. And then before we press this or anything, we are going to just soak it and dissolve as much of the water soluble stabilizer as you would like because you can make it stiff or you could have it be a little bit more um, flexible. So that's up to you. But I'm going to hang this on my tree with little treats inside. All right, that was easy, wasn't it? I bet you might even try making the small and the large one if you have some stitching time because. Anytime we do freestanding lace, there's a lot of stitching time, right? <laughs> All right, well, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville, and there you can like, comment, and subscribe. Happy embroidery.